Welcome everyone to David Dudley Outdoors and today, yes, we're going to be talking about the drop shot. Uh, the drop shot got famous over in Japan and basically an I've heard rumors that an angler came over here from Japan, started dominating on the co-angler side, then people started catching on of what he was doing, next thing you know it's exploded over here in the USA, and we're still throwing it today until the end of times, okay? The drop shot is one of the most dominating lures that is, is in existence in, in bass fishing. We can agree with that. It's gonna catch them from Michigan all the way down to Florida, to Texas, to California. It doesn't matter where this lure and this technique is being fished at. It's just an absolute dominating lure. So let's talk about a few things. When do you throw a drop shot and why is it such a dominating lure? Why, why is it that We've seen more and more people catch fish on a drop shot, even on the professional level. I mean, spinning rods have become a bigger role in uh, bass fishing over the last 10 years. Seems like every year we keep seeing spinning rods and drop shots, just finesse techniques. So let's talk about the drop shot. Why is it so dominating? I'm going to give you a couple uh, reasonings why I feel that the drop shot is dominating. There is a time when you don't want to throw the drop shot and then there's a time when you do. We're going to talk about the time that you do. So let's say we're in a mountainous area, okay? And if you're not familiar with the drop shot, the drop shot is basically a lure uh, that is above the sinker. So uh, let me refresh you just in case you don't know. So your sinker is going to be down here. Your lure is going to be down here. Typically it's done with a, some type of straight tail worm that just wiggles and wiggles and then they come and bite it. So weight below the lure, that's what a drop shot is. Go on YouTube, you can probably find a million people telling you how to rig it. Very good lure. So let's talk about when you're going to throw it, okay? Uh, when I'm choosing a drop shot and where I want to throw it, I want to take in consideration a couple things. We're going to talk about leader lengths, okay? What is a, how long do you want your leader to be? That's probably a, a, a number one question you've heard or you've seen Aaron Martins who throws a leader length basically like a uh, this long and then you're, the next person's going to have a leader length this long and 18 inches, 12 inches, ah, it can get confusing. But a system that I use to narrow down my leader length is I base it on the cover that I'm fishing. So follow me. So if I'm fishing grass, okay, and I'm, I'm throwing my drop shot around grass, uh, let's say it's in the beginning of the year, the grass is about this tall, naturally, I'm going to want my leader length to be above the average growth and the average structures, structure that I am around. So uh, beginning of the year, I'm not going to the extreme. I still want my lure to be relatively close, but above, like waving a flag, I want it above all the grass. So take, for instance, my fingers, you know, whatever, I, I don't know. Let's just say it's eight inches, the grass is about eight inches tall. Well, I don't want to go 16 inches tall. I want my lure to look a little bit more natural. So if it's eight inches tall, I want it to be, you know, four inches. So I'm going to go with a 12 inch leader length. Now, granted, you're not going to be throwing a drop shot in hydrilla that's grown up. I, I know you're probably going to comment and, and tell me that you throw it in this, that, and the other. I'm speaking uh, on ground cover that I'm talking about. So let's talk about this, okay? Say I'm in an area where boulders are big, and I want you guys to understand why a drop shot is so dominant. It's because it's giving the presentation of the lure that the bass can see. For example, if I was to go and throw a shaky head or a Texas rig and I'm dragging it, and I'm in, let's say, volleyball size boulders, my lure is going to go in between a crack here and a crack there. And when it goes down in between it, guess what? If he's just kind of cruising along, 
he cannot see it in between two boulders, right? So he just swam right past my lure while my, my Texas rig or my shaky head was in amongst, hidden in a crack of, a, of a, uh, two boulders. So if you're fishing a very boulderous bank, you're gonna take the average depth size of the rocks that you see and just assume that that's out there. The drop shot becomes dominant because why? It's always above that in an area that they can see it. A lot of lures get lost coming through rocks, coming through grass, coming over top of grass. If you have a matted floor of grass and you're kind of trying to drag your Texas rig through it, guess what's going to happen? It's going to bury itself up. Here comes four pounder cruising by. He cruised right on by it. But you take that matted grass that's up off the water about eight inches, you rig a drop shot up, you pitch a light sinker drop shot over there, and it's just dancing right above the grass, what's he gonna do? He's gonna see it and eat it, okay? So let's, take, let's go to the extreme. Let's just say the average size rocks I'm on is a softball. I hope you guys are getting a point. Hey, and if you're enjoying this video before I get in a little bit more, hit the thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. You guys have been phenomenal. I, I, hopefully, I've given you the good stuff. You guys have been giving me stuff to think about. Uh, hit the like button. Share a comment below if you've enjoyed this video and share the video. So let's go to the extreme. Let's go to the extreme, which is this. Let's just say I'm fishing baseball size rock and the majority of a, that rocky bank is baseball okay i'm not going to go to the extreme again and fish an 18 20 inch drop shot leader i still want my lure relatively close to the bottom but yet waving like a flag okay so if you guys understand a drop shot, you can quickly change your sinker okay so it's it, typically it's got a uh a keeper system on it where you can just slide your line in, wedge it up in between the, the metal, and adjust it. I do it constantly on the water. Guys, don't worry about that tiny little tag. So I can take my sinker, move it up six more inches, and get more bites because why? It's not as dominant, you know, when my lure is sitting three foot above, two foot above, if you got 18, 24 inch leader above your line, above, you, you, you know, your sinker, and it's getting a little exaggeration. I still want it where their eyes are hunting at. Their eyes, if they're at boulders, their eyes are swimming down. They're looking for, they're just looking for an opportunity. They're looking for crawdads maybe a night crawl, I don't know, whatever swims down. They want an opportunity to eat something and they know where they live the majority of the time. So they're gonna be looking. I don't like my drop shot to be super high. So hopefully you guys are getting a point of what size leader length I'm using when I'm throwing a drop shot. So why is it dominating? You just heard me explain to you like, hey, if you're fishing this, type of ground cover, uh, this is what you want to do, but it's just a lure that stays in their eyesight at all times. Now there's times when you're going to want to throw a shaky head. There's times when you're going to want to throw um, a drag of football jig. There's certain scenarios with that. I don't have time in this video to get to that, but that will be a, a video in later use. But as of right now, the drop shot is so dominant because it's literally like a flagpole waving in the wind and drawing attention to itself. It's not getting lost in between rocks. It's not getting lost in between, you know, grass or hidden and they're cruising by. Don't see it. Don't see the lure. Never gave them a chance or never gave them an opportunity. Uh, we could talk about drop shots just out in open water where there's nothing uh, great for suspended bass, great for smallmouth. A drop, a drop shot can really catch them anywhere you go. And it, you know, at times you can catch a lot of good quality bass on a drop shot. I'm not gonna say you can catch giants all the time on a drop shot, I'd be lying to you. But you can catch good tournament quality fish, whether you're fishing tournaments, whether you're fishing 
you know, just a recreational, you can catch a lot of good bass and an occasional big bass on a drop shot. So don't trump me in your comments and say I caught 37 pounds on a drop shot. You know, be reasonable when you comment. I love reading your comments because I've learned a lot over the last little bit just reading you guys and listening to your reasoning behind your thoughts. I love it when you comment with reasoning behind your comments. You guys have been phenomenal. So when it comes to a drop shot and it comes to selecting uh, your leader links, why is it dominated? Because to me, it's like a flagpole. So again, I'm going to remind you one more time, uh, look at your ground cover. You know, in the winter time when it's no grass on the bottom, the shaky head's going to be dominant. Okay, something bouncing on the bottom, that's going to be a dominated lure. But once algae starts growing, whether it's in grass starts growing, if you're fishing a big boulderous uh, area, you're fishing softball sized rocks, adjust your leader length to uh, be just above the average size structure that you're fishing around. Hopefully this guy's Hopefully, guys, this is going to help you catch a lot more fish because if you don't do the right things, you can always get bit on a drop shot. Always. But there's a difference in getting 10 bites or 20 bites, and it could, from, it could come from just adjusting your sinker up four more inches, and you went from getting 10 bites to 20 bites. You were happy with 10, but Joe Schmo caught 20 because he had the right leader length, and when it comes to understanding the drop shot, I hope that you guys have learned something. I really do. Thanks again, guys. You guys have been phenomenal in hitting that subscribe button. We are growing like crazy. Thanks to you. I just got goosebumps thinking about how generous you guys have been to me. Thank you for watching my video. And if you see me around, I need more people doing the outro. So if I have a camera and you wanna be on this video, Check it out and I will record you and you can do the outro.